Hi everyone, welcome back. I have another skincare reaction for you. And as you can see from the title, I am taking a look at Vanessa Hudgens. She has her skincare routine on Harper's Bazaar. It's part of the go to bed with me routines. As you may know, or maybe don't know, she has launched a skincare line with another uh, influencer. And I, I actually wouldn't call Vanessa an influencer, like the classic influencer. I think of her more as like a celebrity and actress. The last time I think I watched something with her in it was Sprang Break. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm a mom, okay, you guys. I've been I'm sometimes living under a rock as a, as a mom of babies and toddlers. But she did partner up with an influencer named Madison Beer. Um, she is an influencer, she's younger. I think Vanessa's like 32. Madison has to be in her early 20s. And together, they decided to take kind of like a, a page out of the classic celebrity playbook where, you know, they go ahead and launch a beauty line and present it out to the world. And it's a little bit played out because we all know now that celebrities tend to make a lot of mistakes, especially when it comes to their skincare routines. I'm sure that they've paid attention over the last couple of years to the criticism that now is out there about skincare especially, but they're still going that route. And to be frank, I'm a little, I'm a little bit sick of it. But what I will say is for this line, they did partner with a Harvard trained board certified dermatologist. I don't know her personally. I've never worked with her, but I'm gonna make the assumption that she's brilliant and she probably knows a lot about skin just by nature of what it is that she does for a living. So that actually makes me feel a little bit more confident about this skincare line. That said, they did try to go a little bit more innovative with it, which I actually appreciate trying to at least take a different approach than your classic, you know, skincare line that has olive oil in it or something like that. At least they're they're going about it a little bit differently. So with their skincare line, No Beauty, you go online and I actually just did this test so that I could, you know, like share my experience with you, but you have a skin diagnostic and it's not anything out of the ordinary, you know, like you can go to a lot of different skincare brands websites and take these types of tests where it essentially puts together a skincare routine for you based on what you answer in these questions. It starts off with a minute, I got past that minute, and then they, you know, they were like, we can get a little bit deeper with another minute. And in a lot of ways, I like this because it is being a little bit more personalized to you, especially if you don't know what to choose. They also have another portion of this where it can go even deeper and they can do a DNA test on you. I think that there is something to be said about, you know, like really truly personalizing our skincare. We see all these little things constantly and I see it even more so as I have my team try out products that I like and then find out they don't like them for whatever reason or it irritated someone's skin, but it was great on my skin. And you know, we just know that skincare can be very, very personal. And sometimes there are reasons that we can't even figure out why, right? Like it really does come down to DNA and being personalized. That said, do we know if it works really well, if they can really pinpoint this? I don't know. I've seen brands try this before. And so far, I feel like it might be a little too complicated and it, it's not really hitting. So I'm curious to see how this brand is going to do over time, it's still really new right now. And I do understand why they would choose two celebrities to be the forward facing founders of this brand. They do have a following and hopefully they do sell to their followers if they are big enough fans, right? So I get it. I understand, you know, like the whole thinking behind all this. That said, we're about to watch Vanessa Hudgens and her skincare routine. And I'm gonna make the assumption that we're gonna see mostly, if not all products from her own brand. And I'm gonna throw out there right away, I think it's a missed opportunity to have the dermatologist with her in this video to help discuss some of these products. But that's not the format of this. So let's just go ahead and get into it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Susan Yara. I have been in the beauty industry for two decades. I started off as a beauty editor. I now have my own skincare line and I love to talk about skincare and beauty on this YouTube channel. If that sounds good to you, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's take a look at Vanessa Hudgens. I mean, she is a beautiful woman. I have no idea what she's been up to lately, but obviously it seems like she's doing well. Hey, Harper's Bazaar, I'm Vanessa Hudgens, and I just got home from a press day. Now it's time to take this all off. So I would love for you to get ready to go to bed with me. So for me, getting ready to go to bed and taking off my makeup is genuinely something I look forward to, especially after a long day when powder is just being caked on constantly because I'm so oily. 
I'm always just shining. So there we go. I love when these videos start off with the person telling us a little bit more about their skin because it really sets the tone of what it is we can expect or at least we should expect. So she's talking about how her skin can be a little bit oily. That could mean one of two things. It could be that she actually has oily skin or that she just is powdering down so much, her makeup artist is powdering down and stuff. And what ends up happening is you start to get almost like a greasy look to your face because you have so much product on your face and it's starting to cake on. On the No Beauty website, they kind of have like their skin diagnostics for the founders and they really seem to focus on sensitivity for her too. So I'm gonna make the assumption then that she has sensitive skin as well. So those are the two things to kind of keep in mind, oily skin, potentially oily, and also sensitive. I feel like very necessary for for me, I have to light my candles, put on something cozy and silky, because that's just the vibe. I'm all about setting the tone and having a vibe when you go to sleep. I love this bathroom situation. I don't know if this is actually her bathroom, but if it is, it's, you know, I'm, I'm liking this. It's not your typical bright white kind of bathroom. It's like dark in there and moody. She's got this nice green silky robe on. I'm kind of feeling this, Vanessa, I'm feeling it. So the first thing that I start with is cleanse. Gotta get it all off. I am going to put a headband on because this little swoop is too cute to get wet. We're gonna keep her. That's how I feel. Like, I want to preserve the hair also for at least the next day. So I, I feel that too. So I start off with my No Beauty Purifying Cleanser. It is full of hyaluronic acid, which is really great for hydrating the skin, as well as grapefruit for detoxifying and brightening, kind of a gentle exfoliant. And casually, I am a co-founder of No Beauty with Madison Beer um, and Dr. Kaga. We all teamed up together and it's very exciting. Um, and with No Beauty, we have created a system that is completely unique to you. You will have a skin diagnostics test where you will take a quiz and answer a bunch of questions about your environment, what your concerns are, kind of like where your skin is right now. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get this off. All right, so I just looked up this cleanser. You know, I have kind of taken that turn where I'm like, you cannot judge a product solely on the ingredient list. It's all about formulation. You have to feel the product and really get an idea of how it is on your skin. This could be a totally fine cleanser. It looks pretty basic as far as I can tell. She talks about the grapefruit extract in here. There are a few different extracts in here and those can have natural AHAs in them. So they call it a purifying cleanser because of that. It also has some hydrating ingredients. It does have fragrance and it is pretty far up on the ingredient list. So if you don't like fragrance, I would keep that in mind. There is fragrance in here. I'm totally fine with fragrance. I just point that out because people ask me to. As far as cleansing her face, I'm happy that she went in with a cleanse because she talked about how how she was caking her makeup on, but you know, I am all about a double cleanse. And honestly, you don't even have to start with the classic like oil-based cleanser and then go in with your regular cleanser like this, more of like a water-based cleanser. You can technically start with micellar water, you know, even using the same cleanser to go in twice, but I've gotten to the point where she's already patting down her face with a towel. So something tells me that she is not going to do a double cleanse. And I assume it's because there is not a double cleansing type of product, an oil-based product in this line, at least not yet. So she's really just kind of going in with this one cleanser. Do I think that that one cleanser could remove all of that makeup? Maybe, but we didn't really get an opportunity to see that. We don't know what she did off camera and also, her eye makeup is still on, so I'm curious to see if she's gonna go in with like a makeup remover or something now. As far as the skin diagnostic test that she was talking about, I mentioned that briefly in the intro. It's really just this DNA kit that they offer, which by the way, is also $95. So you have to pay for that separately, and that's not what gets you started on your skincare routine. They already suggested a full skincare routine to me without doing my actual DNA test. So just so you guys know, that's what that skin diagnostic test is. So next. Since I've had a long day and want something to just kind of like revitalize my skin, I'm going to use the No Beauty Bubbling Oxygen Mask. Okay, so she's not going in with eye makeup remover. She's going to keep her eye makeup on for the rest of the routine. So it's gonna, it's going to bother me a little bit. I'm going to try to look past that to see the rest of her routine, but we'll know, we'll know that her eye makeup is still on. That said, if this is her skin, Wow, gorgeous. 
I hope she shares also some of the treatments that she gets done outside of her skincare routine. So let's see, she's gonna go in with this no bubbling oxygen mask. So the thing that's really cool about this is it's sealed airtight. There's no oxygen in it whatsoever. So as it comes out, it's like really shiny and sparkly. I love sparkles. It oxygenates on your skin and just really allows your skin to <laughs> come back to life. I have fallen in love with skincare as I've gotten older. Partly because, you know, you start to see little things and you're like, wait, what is that? That wasn't there a few years ago. You know, it's taken me so long to like actually get to a place where I like my skin and feel good in my skin and feel confident in my skin and can feel sexy in my skin without makeup. You know, I think that like everyone's self-confidence goes down when you have breakouts. I know mine does and you just don't feel your best. And it's such a vicious cycle because it's like, oh, there's more things that are going wrong with my skin. I gotta get more things, try more things. And sometimes it can be too overwhelming for your skin. That's definitely happened to me where there's too many ingredients. And it's just, it sucks and it's like so frustrating because you just want to feel good. Honestly, so much validity to everything that she said. I mean, it really does go like that. You have some type of a skin issue. You have a breakout. You have hyperpigmentation. You have some kind of an irritation. You've got flakiness. Something happens with your skin and it sets you into this cycle of buying too many products, not knowing what it is that you're using. Luckily, it brings you to channels like mine, right? Like that is what happens. It is the cycle. You are buying products, trying products, doing too much, trying to figure out what to do, looking up information. I mean, you really do get into a cycle and it sucks. It really sucks how much, you know, like skin issues can really play on your self-esteem. There's absolute truth to that. There's no doubt about it. As far as this product goes, I mean, are we still doing bubble masks? They were really cute a few years ago, but now I think we're starting to realize like they're okay. Again, I haven't used any of these products. I haven't tried them. So this is truly like, this is a hydrating mask for your skin. One thing I will say is because it is a mask that you remove, she is technically double cleansing. So she did get her skin really clean by using this and she got it hydrated by using this mask. Those are the two things that I would say, but that is a gimmick to have the oxygenating mask, right? Where it bubbles up and stuff. They're totally fun. I have loved a couple of masks that do that, but it is not a new technology. It isn't a new concept and it doesn't necessarily change your skincare routine. If you enjoy using it, then go ahead and use it. It's a totally fine product, but it's not something that's going to change your skin. And the truth of the matter is she still has her eye makeup on. It's a little bit like, it's not bright purple like it was when she started the video. And I get it. You want to keep your lashes on. Maybe they are like fake lashes, like the falsies and stuff that you, you know, you don't want to like ruin because they're going to stay on for a while or something. But the eye makeup is on. Next. I like to tone. I use the Caudalie you know, Vino Perfect Concentrated Brightening Essence. I just kind of slap it onto my skin. You know, just... <laughs> mm. You just gotta have fun with it. All right, so she's going in with this Caudalie Brightening Essence. I love a good essence. It's hydrating for your skin. This one, I wanted to know what brightening meant because brightening can mean a billion different things these days in marketing, right? Brightening can mean that it exfoliates your skin or it can have an ingredient like vitamin C or ingredients now that are starting to become more and more popular like alpha arbutin or tranexamic acid that can also brighten your skin, but in completely different ways. This one specifically has glycolic acid in it. So it has like some fermented ingredients in it too. Too. I mean, Kudali really prides itself on grapes, right? Like that is what they have a lot of the time. So it's like, I think it's a lot of like fermented grapes or something, grape extract or something. That can also be brightening for your skin, also make your skin feel nice. It can make the product feel really nice when it goes onto your skin too. I love glycolic acid. It's one of the best exfoliating, chemical exfoliators out there, but it's something to be aware of if you have sensitive skin, especially. And again, I go back to, they put on the website that she has sensitivity that she deals with. So if you're a person that's associating yourself with Vanessa with sensitive skin, just be aware of this kind of stuff. You wanna go into it slowly using it, especially when it's a product like an essence where you don't associate it with exfoliating your skin. So next, I use my No Beauty Resurfacing Night Serum. 
like so. It has retinoid, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, so it's just a shot of vitamins for the skin. And this is one thing that I learned from my diagnostics test. My skin is quite dehydrated. So we wanna add in the retinoid and the hyaluronic acid just to keep my skin plump and young and looking great so that I can avoid wrinkles and not have to put any needles in my skin. <laughs> ah, so nice. Beautimus. Okay, first off, there's nothing wrong with putting needles in your skin. You are not solving those issues by putting skincare products on your face. I can tell you that right now. When you age, you're also dealing with gravity, loss of collagen, loss of elastin, like all of these things cannot be stopped with skincare. That said, you do need skincare to have hydration and look a little bit fresher and plumper to help with things like hyperpigmentation and acne and stuff. You do need your skincare for that type of maintenance. You're not gonna use a product like this and avoid needles, I can tell you that much. If you want to avoid needles, because you just want to avoid needles. That's, that's a different story, but it's not going to be a skincare product that stops that. She also makes retinoids seem a little confusing for the average consumer because we know as skincare enthusiasts that retinoids are one of the best ingredients you can add into your skincare routine, especially at night. It is what's going to help with skin cell turnover and everything, but it is not a hydrating ingredient. In fact, it could be irritating for your skin and maybe even lead to more dehydration and stuff if you're not using it correctly or if you're overdoing it. It. I did look up the ingredient list of this product. The retinoid in here is very, very gentle. It's a little bit newer. It's a newer technology, I guess, in skincare. This is the kind of retinoid you use if you are truly just getting started. This is not retinol. This is more commonly known as Gran Active. Like this is really, really low on the list when it comes to retinoids. Like I could probably bathe in this twice a day and it wouldn't do much for my skin because I've moved on to much stronger retinoids in my skin skincare routine, but for someone getting started, someone who does have sensitive skin, people who actually can't tolerate retinoids, that is actually a thing. I, I think people are like, no, it's like the best skincare ingredient you can add into your skincare routine. It's true, but it doesn't mean that people can't be sensitive to it. They can be, and a lot of people are. So this is a really good starter retinoid. Is this the one that's going to change your skin and keep needles out of your face? Absolutely not. We know there's no skincare product that's gonna do it, but this is definitely not the retinoid that is going to to keep needles out of your face, I'll tell you that for sure. When it comes to the actual hydrating ingredients in this skincare product, there is hyaluronic acid in here, but there's also good old glycerin, which is an OG. It's known to really truly hydrate your skin. So there are some really good ingredients in here too. There's also alpha arbutin in here, which is a great brightening ingredient. It's really gentle for your skin. It's great to even your skin tone if you have hyperpigmentation. That's an ingredient that you would actually want to look for. So I have no doubt that this is a really nice, gentle product for your skin. Is this gonna change your skin and keep needles out? No, and I hate that it was presented in that way. I love a really aggressive rolling moment because I'm trying to de define those cheekbones. Gotta get the cheekbones high and tight. Skin Gym, this one is called. I don't know. I have so many random things. I always just kind of collect things when it comes to skincare and see what works. But that led me down a very slippery slope because I feel like for a while I was just breaking out constantly. It was such a bummer. But now like I'm finally like, and I wake up in the morning and I look and I'm like, oh my gosh, my skin is actually great. <laughs> it actually looks really good. I just want everyone to feel great in their own skin. All right, so aggressive with the face roller. You do not need to be aggressive with a face roller. In fact, it's the opposite. Do not be aggressive with your face roller. You need way more slip than she has. You do not need to press it hard. And P.S. it is not going to keep your cheekbones high and tight. You know what will? Needles. I think threads, like threads are great to keep your cheekbones nice and high and tight. You might even wanna try like a little Botox lift or something. There are a lot of things you can do if you go see a doctor. It's definitely not going to be this face roller. And in fact, that face roller, when you're being aggressive over time, all that tugging is potentially going to make your skin more saggy and drop your cheekbones. You cannot define your cheekbones 
with a face roller like that. If that were the case, I would be face rolling all day long. I'd be sitting at my desk rolling. It'd be all we do. It's, it's just not going to do that. You cannot define your face with a face roller. You can massage it, that's it. Massage it. Circulation is great for your face. Just be gentle, that's all. Okay, next one, next one, next one. What do we do? I'm gonna moisturize. Great. I, since getting ready for bed, it used this brand Lapcos Collagen Lifting Sleeping Cream. It's a fun little thing that is just thick. And I love a thick cream. <laughs> I feel like my skincare journey kind of started late just because I had great skin growing up, even though I was using a ton of makeup. I never really had breakouts. I never really had too many things go wrong until I turned 21 and started drinking wine uh, and eating cheese. Terrible for your skin. But I was addicted to wine and cheese and I would go almost every night and I loved it and it was decadent, but man, my skin hated it. I was just getting breakouts left and right and it was just so infuriating. And I feel like that's when I first started to like do something about my skin. And then I hit 30. <laughs> Can't stay young forever. All right, so this Lapco sleeping cream, it, you know, as far as the ingredient list goes, it's got shea butter, it's got glycerin, it's got some really great ingredients in here as far as I can see. So for all intents and purposes, this is supposed to be a great moisturizer. It does have some fragrance for those that care, but this looks like it's a overall really great product, very nice, rich moisturizer. It has some niacinamide in it. I love niacinamide. It's just great for your skin barrier. It helps to brighten your skin overall. So this is a really nice moisturizer. I wish she would have put this moisturizer on and then went in with the face roller because that would have been that perfect amount of slip. She could even use potentially a little bit more, but this would have been probably fine and it probably would have been a little less aggressive. You know what's funny is for her, she's like, it was wine and cheese that she was addicted to at 21. For me, it was like Taco Bell, but both could potentially be bad for your skin for sure. I, I hate this overgeneralization though, that like dairy is so bad for your skin. I can eat dairy all day long and the only thing it's bad for is my tummy. <laughs> but as far as my skin goes, I don't get any breakouts from dairy. Do I know people that get breakouts when they start to eat a lot of dairy? For sure. But it's this overgeneralization of it. I think you really have to be aware of the things that affect your own body. Just like skincare products, what's happening to your skin is also very very personal. There are a lot of internal things for me that do affect my skin. Hormones are a big one for me. You guys see this with like my melasma and stuff. That is all due to my hormones and the things that I'm dealing with, but it has nothing to do with dairy for me. That said, it could probably be a thing for her. I just don't like the generalization. You know, like it's not always the same thing for everybody. Okay, so then the next thing, gotta have it, eye cream. I've been using, I use a lot of different things and I kind of rotate between things depending on how my skin feels. Wait, so she's kind of like, I keep it really simple and I used to, you know, like use a bunch of different things, but I don't do that anymore. But now she's like back to, but I do actually, but I do actually try a lot of different things because that's just, because you know what? In reality, I think a lot of people who love skincare, I think it's okay to admit that you like trying different products. It's totally fine. If that's who you are, be you, do what you want to do. Do not try to stick with the same messaging that you see on the internet right now. That's not the way to go. I say this all the time. I like my fragrance. I like to have an elaborate routine. I like to try different things. It is who I am. It gives you a lot of perspective about where I'm coming from when I talk about skincare products that I really enjoy and I like when I'm reviewing them. So I think it's okay to say that. The worst is when you hear somebody like switch their messaging around and say things that they hope will please you as the viewer especially when it's in, in terms of like selling a product or something. Right now I'm going to use the Frexo Jelly Cactus Eye Jelly with plant collagen. I just love what they do and feel like it's a great pick me up. I always use my middle finger for my eye cream. I don't think I'm gonna put any on the top of my eyes. Normally if it's like right before I go to sleep, I'll put some on above, but right now, there's nothing worse than when you're going about your day and you put on too much eye cream 
and <laughs> you can't see clearly because it's kind of clouding your vision. <laughs> Someone knows what I'm talking about out there. I actually talk about this all the time when it comes to eye cream. I like to tap it just around the orbital bone. I have such a hard time saying orbital. And the reason for that, I even see people say this when like in the comments and stuff, like she never seems to put things on her eyes. It's because your products travel. And eye cream is another example of that. If you put it onto your eyelid and stuff, it is going to get into your eyes. Your products will travel. So you just need to put it on the orbital bone, especially with your eyelids. You know, the skin is smoother there. You're constantly blinking on a regular basis. I'm like blinking for you guys to prove that point. Um, but, uh, but your products will travel because of those things. So you don't have to glob it onto your eyelids. I also happen to have really sensitive eyes. My eyes are always bloodshot because products that I put on my face always end up in my eyes, especially sunscreen constantly trying to powder down and set my sunscreen and everything so it doesn't get all over the place, all over my eyes. As far as the eye jelly that she's putting onto her face, this seems like it's more of like a balmy, I guess it has some oils in it too. So this doesn't seem like it's truly like a thick, thick, eye cream, so she could technically have put it on underneath the sleeping cream that she put on. And I say this because the distinctions of the names signal to me that the jelly would be thinner than a sleeping cream. Like I think sleeping cream, and I think this is the last product you're gonna put on your face because it's going to be really thick. And then I think jelly, and I think this is going to be really light and almost like bouncy on the skin. So I always like to go in order of thinnest to thickest when I'm doing my skincare routine. And in this case, it almost seems like the eye jelly would have gone before the sleeping cream. That said, I have not touched either of these products. I cannot tell you for sure if that is the case. As far as having to use an eye cream, she said it's a must. You know, I don't think that eye creams are a must. I think that you can get the same type of benefit from using your other skincare products, including your moisturizers. People are under this impression that eye creams are made with different types of ingredients that are made to be smaller molecules and stuff. Yes and no, there's definitely some formulation. There's some magic that happens in the lab with the chemists and stuff where they make this a little bit more focused on the eye to be a nicer product for the eye area. They can make other types of products feel really nice too though. So they're just kind of keeping that in mind when it comes to the eye. I like a product like this, like this jelly, as far as the ingredients go, I would probably use this more as like a morning kind of eye cream for myself. I like morning eye creams because it really helps my makeup look better, especially around my under eye area where I get a little bit more wrinkles. I smile a lot and stuff. I use concealer all the time. So I like it to really look smooth there. And I like a good eye cream for that area because it's just, you know what you're going to get with a nice eye cream. As far as like a treatment though, this is not a treatment for your skin. It's just hydrating and moisturizing for your skin. And that's something to always keep in mind as well. I don't mind that. I, that's what I look for in a morning eye cream. But if you want something that's truly gonna help with things like wrinkles, dark circles, this isn't the eye cream that's gonna do that. And that's in the context of what most people are messaging me about when they ask for a eye cream suggestion. They usually wanna know what's going to stop dark circles or stop their wrinkles. None of it is going to stop with an eye cream. But you can find an eye cream that has something like, you know, glycolic acid in it, even vitamin C in it for some brightening. You can find an eye cream that has retinol in it. Maybe you can't tolerate retinol all over your face, but maybe you can tolerate a little bit on your eye area. So it all just kind of depends on what it is that you're looking for. I think my last step is this wand that I just got. I love trying new things. Spencer Barnes is a makeup artist that I worked with and he came out with this metabolic melting collagen tightening wand, a sculpting wand for neck, chin, jawline. And like I said, the neck never lies when it comes to your age. So I feel like I have to take extra special care. Do it for the young neck. <laughs> All right, so her neck wand. I appreciate she is giving a, a shout out to her makeup artist. I love Spencer Barnes. He does a really great job with makeup. He is the sweetest guy. I've definitely worked with him as a producer on some video shoots before, and he really does do a great job with makeup as well. As far as this makeup wand goes, you know, there's not a lot happening with it. I'm sure it has a really nice kind of like serum -y cream for the neck. It does have peptides in it. It does have some great ingredients like squalane. There's ceramides in here. There's hydrate 
hydrating ingredients, there are moisturizing ingredients, there is some caffeine that can help to tighten things up a little bit, but there's nothing like a retinoid that is going to completely change the skin on your neck. I agree with Vanessa, your neck gives away your age all the time. It's one of those places where you can start to see the signs of aging and it eventually does give your age away. You definitely should not miss your skincare routine on your neck and even your chest area, I always say, Bring it down to your nipples, ladies, because you wanna make sure that you are getting all of it. Your face starts at the top of your forehead and goes all the way down to the nips. And I got that from Dr. Lancer. It stops at your nipples. So for what it's claiming to do with that like roller ball and all that kind of stuff, I wouldn't, you know, like put all my stock into this product. I'm sure it's a totally fine product. I've never used it before, but you don't need this product specifically for your neck. She could bring all of those creams down. She should probably bring that resurfacing serum down to her neck as well. And that would be way more helpful for her neck than this product would be. This is a nice moisturizer though. Last to top it off, you know, it's been a lot of work. It's been quite the journey getting myself to right here. I always love a little spritz of something. I feel like I shouldn't show you my perfume because it's so personal, but it's okay, it's okay, we're friends here. I use the Maisel Margiela replica by the fireplace. It's so cute. It's like based off of times and places. So this is like France, 1971, burning wood and chestnuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds amazing. I want to spray that on myself. You know what I thought for a second? I thought she was doing that classic like, at the end of my skincare routine, I spritz myself with a spray toner. And so I was starting to get like, oh gosh, are we still doing this? But she didn't, she put on her perfume. I actually know a lot of people who like to wear their perfume before bed. And you know, some people find that they like that better. This is that perfume is a totally personal thing, preference, whatever. If she's good with that, that's her thing. Let her live. Ooh, I forgot my lips. Got this little fresh sugar lychee, lychee, lychee. I never know. Mm. Much better. Guys, that's that's it. To everyone, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you feel a little more zen and at peace. I am going to get into bed and put on some Netflix and cuddle with Darla. Bye. All right, so there you go. That was Vanessa Hudgens. We saw her use some of her products from her skincare line, No Beauty. You know, nothing like groundbreaking here or anything. She didn't do anything that was like wrong necessarily besides not completely removing her eye makeup. We really don't know what happened kind of behind the scenes of that. And you know, like celebrities, you can't blame Harper's Bazaar, I'll tell you that. Like there are definitely like rules that come with celebrities. If that's what she wants, that's what she wants. And sometimes that happens. Right there at the end, she put on some lip balm. I usually never have a lot to say about lip balm unless it's one that I just love also. I like the fresh lip balms. They always smell really nice too. So they feel good, they smell nice. I'm into it. As far as, you know, like the one note I wanna just kind of wrap up on, I suppose, is that, you know, it, it is interesting. She started off saying that she had oily skin and then, you know, she's, she says on the website that she's got sensitivities and stuff. But nothing about this routine alluded to helping any of that kind of stuff. So I feel like that was a little bit disappointing for me because I wanted to see what she's at least claiming to do to try to solve those things or to like deal with it. And then, you know, like I always, I always, wish that celebrities especially and influencers would share the treatments that they get done outside of their skincare routine because it really gives us that full picture. It tells the full story of what they're doing to make their skin look amazing. I mean, there's no doubt she looks amazing. Her skin was plump, it was dewy, it was completely smooth. The, the tone, the texture of it, like it looked like she has her skin in check, like it looks really good. I always just want to know what somebody is doing outside of this. Like, is she getting laser treatments done? Is she getting a facial every week? I want to know. That's always so helpful because you know what? Maybe I want to do it. Maybe we all want to give it a try to look like Vanessa Hudgens. And that's always the one thing with celebrities is I wish that they would share a little bit more of what they do. If you guys have any questions or comments, obviously you can leave them below. I'll leave the link to the original video in the description box. You can also find me in our private Facebook group where we all get around and we talk about skincare routines and we talk about our products that we love. We look for suggestions. We talk about beauty in general as well. You can also find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you guys soon.
Bye.